Hey everyone, it's Shadow Streak, and today I am doing a sort of different video for my channel. This isn't something I've ever really done before, but I was approached by someone who's pretty cool, pretty chill guy, and uh, you know, kind of threw out the idea to me, and I thought, why not? Let's do it. So, uh, well, why don't you just introduce yourself? Hey guys, Pie Guy Rules here, and uh, thank you very much for doing this fun journey with me <laughs> <laughs> hey it's a pleasure it's a pleasure man so uh you know you talk about powerpuff girls a little bit right yeah just a little bit i mean you know maybe mm -hmm. uh, every once in a while <laughs> so it, it kind of astonishes me that you haven't talked about the the classic hit that is the powerpuff girls dance dance <laughs> i mean like <laughs> yeah you know, it's interesting because I've been doing this for over two years and I think I've only brought it up in my videos maybe twice at most. I know I've done it at least once, but yeah, I get asked about this special quite a bit. So I figured, you know, this was a perfect opportunity to finally get some of my thoughts out there, even if it's not a full on review. Yeah, I mean, it's weird because Dance Pants is in a way it's the pilot to the Powerpuff Girls mm -hmm. 2016. Uh, it came out in 2014, has doesn't have the same voices for the main girls doesn't have anything close to the same art style um it's different in a lot of ways but it is still the closest thing um time wise and even kind of content wise in a way so it's an interesting subject to talk about in regards to the reboot yeah absolutely i mean i remember when this first uh dance pants special was coming out and at the time i was actually i forget if there were rumors that had already started spreading about the show getting rebooted or not but i was always under the impression that this was the start of a reboot and then the show kind of like it it kind of went unnoticed for six months and then I do remember reading an, a news article in like June of 2014 that had officially confirmed it. And I mean, there's definitely a lot of similarities present in Dance Pants, like, and we'll get into this uh, once the discussion goes on. But it's interesting because I haven't really gone back to Dance Pants since it aired. I think I watched it maybe one other time a year or two later. But for the most part, this was kind of reliving the experience again. <laughs> yeah um i mean and, and experience is actually a decent word for it because i mean not that i'm saying that this piece of media like transcends just watching a piece of media but uh it is it is something different because the the weird thing about dance pants is that the powerpuff girls had a reunion special a really good one i think um and so this isn't i mean it is a reunion but like we already had that we had something that was ultimately a celebration of the entire show that tried to cram in as many cram in as many characters as many themes as many jokes as many everything that seemed like a real big uh just kind of love letter and swan song to the series so uh and that was somewhere around mm -hmm. 2009 i think um so to cram in dance pants quite a few years later that wasn't it's not a sequel to that special and it's not like another reunion type thing and they developed this whole new art style that I have never seen in any other Cartoon Network show or any show, period. Um, this very specific type of uh, kind of 3D animation. To develop all of that and to just have it be a one-off, that seemed not the case. It seemed like, well, okay, they have to be doing something with this. Even if it's just a tech demo uh, for the technology for another show Cartoon Network is producing, this seemed to be leading to something and it's, I don't think anyone would have expected that it would lead to what we ultimately got in the Powerpuff Girls 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I've always kind of looked back on this and saw it as basically like something experimental. Like the network wanted to try something completely out there and different compared to anything else they had ever done before. And to be honest, anything they've ever done since. It was a really interesting special because I don't know if it was their attempt to gauge interest in how many people wanted to see the powerpuff girls back i mean i'm sure that could have played a part in it um considering that the reboot ended up did coming out after the fact so i forget what the ratings were for dance pants when it aired i'm not entirely sure on that but if they were high enough then they might have actually used this to ultimately give the reboot a green light i mean i don't think it's coincidental i don't i don't know if they're playing 100% was to reboot. I mean, it's weird because you think of it um you think of it now in this context of cart of of uh, Nickelodeon doing all of these 
TV movie re, mm -hmm. uh, continuation reboot type things. And if this was like the beginning of Cartoon Network doing a bunch of like, here's a Dexter's Lab reunion movie and here's this and this and this, then it would make a lot more sense. But Cartoon Network generally doesn't do this. We don't really get, I mean, Powerpuff Girls got two basically reunion type things. Um, and it's not, they're just kind of completely alone in their own little islands. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely. Weird. The only other time I can think of something and not to mention the fact that Powerpuff Girls got their own movie, too. So, like, when you look at that as yeah. well, it's like, yeah, that is a little weird that, like, Samurai Jack was rumored to have a movie. That never happened. Adventure Time was rumored to have a movie. That never happened. And, I mean, I <laughs> guess Teen Titans Go is getting, is getting a movie, but that's also tied to Warner Brothers, so it's not completely a CN original. But I do understand that this is... It makes sense in a way because the Powerpuff Girls, until Adventure Time, many would argue, was the network's most popular show. So if they were going to make a movie out of anything, they'd go with their most popular show. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's people forget it because it's kind of like it kind of it's kind of gotten the Rugrats syndrome. Not not that people have like forgotten this sh uh, the Powerpuff Girls, but just that um, I don't think people really realize or remember just how big the Powerpuff Girls was. I mean, content wise, I like I. It's definitely one of my favorite cartoon cartoons, but I'd maybe put, like, Courage a little bit above it or Ed, Ed, and Eddie, just personally. Um, but in terms of impact, the show had a huge, huge impact that's not dissimilar to what SpongeBob is today. Yeah, it was wild. Which is, which is ironic because, uh, you know, Tom Kenny can only be attached to huge successes. Uh, yes, or just play incidental roles in, like, everything else. All right, so I guess we can just get into all this with how we feel about Dance Pants Overall as a special. Personally, uh, I've said it before on social media and stuff, but I don't necessarily hate it like I know some people do, and I don't necessarily love it like I know some people do. I'm kind of in this weird in-between where there are several things that I think are great, and I was like, I'd, I'd love to see this in the reboot. And then there are other things that's like, no, please, don't, don't do this. So... Overall, I definitely give it a an above average rating, but not by much. Uh yeah, I, I'd be I'd be about like pretty much exactly down the middle. I'd give this mm -hmm. maybe like a five or six. Um, the first thing to talk about is just kind of the thing that just I, it's definitely the most interesting thing about this whole special is the art style. And I said it when I talked about this just like in a little vlog years ago, but just that. I think this is a really, really cool art style that does not yeah, fit the power of absolutely. girls. The, what really strikes me as, like, good is the backgrounds. The cities look great. The background characters look great. The animation itself is a little choppy and weird, but it's kind of almost like the um, Into the Spider-Verse trailers we've seen, where it kind of goes for really heavy stylization and at the maybe maybe the expense of some of the fluidity. Um but I think the character designs on everyone but, like, the professor and the mayor look just atrocious. The Powerpuff Girls with the weird eyelashes no. does not fit. Um, that that go over their hair, it just doesn't look good. The uh, Mojo being, like, weirdly hairy, he does not look um, cute or iconic or streamlined. He looks like, I, I don't know, like, he's just got too much to his design. I think he looks um, like an old man, if you ask me. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just his face. I think the fact that his, like, green is very, very, like, diluted makes him look like an old man more than anything else. Yo, you know what? He he reminds me of uh, the the monkey teacher from The Amazing World of Gumball. That's oh what he reminds gosh, me of Oh, my gosh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean... For for me personally, one thing I really like about the art style is, and more so the lighting. I, I, I don't know why, but the fact that it, like, when they're in the city, it's got this kind of, like, sunset -y feel to it where there's a lot of shadows going across the buildings and you can see the light kind of yeah bounce off the characters' faces when they move. And I don't know, that that's always struck me. And as you said, the backgrounds are definitely some of the most, like, beautiful things in the entire special. Mm -hmm. I mean... The, the the lighting is really cool, although I think they should have just, like, just turned down the brightness just a little bit on the whole thing. It looks like the whole... It looks just very uh, washed out, almost. And that, in part's probably because of the coloring choices that they went with. Because, like, for example, Bubbles' hair mm -hmm. is almost white with how, like, washed out it is. 
it's you can barely tell it's blonde but um yeah as for the the way the girls themselves look i don't know i was i was initially when i first saw the teaser image for them i was like oh this this doesn't look good at all but it slowly <laughs> has grown on me and even though it's a little jarring and off-putting to this day i've kind of adapted to the way it looks and um if there's one thing i can give it credit for is and this was even true back around like 2013 2014 when this was being made is it looks completely different from like any other show that was on the network at the time and even to this day like as we know with the reboot oh, yes. it's very standard plain you know general looking for a cartoon in the 2010s and dance pants like completely said let's do the exact opposite in every way we can and that's what they did so yeah i mean it, like here's the thing um well, i mean i guess what's weird about the art style being what it is is just because we did have the 10th anniversary special which had flash it was not uh it wasn't the original animation on the show and it wasn't even like the um the more streamlined digital animation that what they went with in the last few seasons it was Flash. I still think it looked good for what it was. There were kind of some places where you could tell it was Flash. Um, and especially given the time <laughs> period it was made, it doesn't necessarily... Like, you could tell right away. But I think it still looks good. And I think it's it's just, like, weird that they... Like, they could have just done that again. But they didn't. And and I, I think it's cool that they were they tried to be ambitious. And I, I think that maybe if, if this was the show that... If this was the pilot that got the show they could have cleaned up certain things. Like, I, I don't I don't think that the girls' designs are disastrous. I just really don't like the uh, the eyelashes. It makes them look, um, I don't know, older or, like, I, I don't know. They look right. less cute, I guess. Um, I think that they could have maybe cleaned up a few things and learned from making this to, to make something that really does look fantastic. And if they just tweak some things, it could look very Powerpuff Girls-y. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, for me personally, the designs have definitely grown on me, but I can totally see why someone would be kind of put off or distracted by it. Because if there's one thing that they definitely live up to in Dance Pants more than the original, it's they look like bug-eyed freaks. <laughs> like, even more so. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very, very true. Um, uh, So the next thing, I, I mean, like, oh, I guess just one last thing on the on the art design is just that, like, it is one of those things where it is so overwhelmingly different that I do feel like it's not it's not fair to watch this episode necessarily right. just once because uh, the first time I did watch it, uh, I think I did the video right after it, and I, I do think that having watched it again now, years later, now that I know what the art style is, I know what it's going to happen going in, I can pay a little bit more attention to the, the story and to everything else that's going on. When you watch it the first time, it is kind of overpowering, not to <laughs> pun but um <laughs> um so yeah the next thing you want to talk about the fibonacci thing yeah this is something that's always bothered me like it bothered me the very first time i saw it air was yeah the special advertises this new character called fibonacci sequence a play on the fibonacci sequence for those mathematicians out there uh and the guest character is voiced by none other than ringo Starr, who's a member of the beatles and as any avid powerpuff fan would know the beatles is kind of a big thing within the show itself considering there's an entire <laughs> episode dedicated to nothing but references to mm -hmm. all of their songs no no not just any episode but like one of the most well-known episodes absolutely it is it is beloved and praised by almost everyone and uh <laughs> i don't know it's just always bothered me that the character Ringo plays is barely in the special. Like he's in the opening, he's in the opening act when he gets captured by the monster for a brief second. And then he kind of disappears until the end when he gets captured again. And then he disappears again. And it's like, I mean, he, yeah, he really is. Dress. That's it. Why would you hype up a character as being the, like that's, um, eh, I mean, I don't know. I, I seem to recall thinking that when they... Because this was, like, huge promotionally Absolutely. for the show. Uh, he, he wrote a song, or he performed a song for the whole thing, which no, wasn't actually was in separate. the thing, which is also weird. Uh, and his character is not the musician character, which is also the weirdest thing, because, I mean, couldn't he be a mathematician and a singer? Why is there an opera singer in there? Like, why do you, why, I mean, I, not that Ringo Starr is necessarily known for singing, but I mean, he's a part of the Beatles, like, yeah. I think they have a drummer, <laughs> right? Um, 
God, but yeah, he, uh, I, I mean, a part of it's the marketing and even just kind of now, but even seeing his character, um, in comparison to like the other two, like the, the little badger, mole, what it, whatever that thing was, and the opera singer, you could tell that like they put more effort into his design and they put more care, most, most care into him of all of these new characters, but yet he doesn't do anything. Right. He's, he's essentially a plot device because he's necessary for Mojo's plan, but that's all he ends up being is just kind of like, you know, a MacGuffin. <laughs> Yeah, and and he's not even unique in that because he shares that role with two other characters. Exactly, two so. random other characters. <laughs> yes, very much so. Um, yeah. Uh, so then, I mean, we got to talk about just the thing that gets talked about with this one, and is it's just there's just no there's no there's no excusing it. There's no getting around it. Yeah. Uh, um, Bubbles having ice breath. It's it's the worst thing ever. It completely. It, it just ruins everything like i can't i can't watch this special it's terrible it this is this is this is worse than teen titans go making fun of me for hating it like i can't i can't stand it it's ruined more childhoods than thundercats ruined. um <laughs> it really has <laughs> i mean i i i'm joking i don't are you joking oh i'm joking completely okay okay i mean i think yeah, it's a it's a stupid stupid mistake. I don't I I cannot cut them any slack because it's not even it's not even like they gave all three girls ice breath. It's they the the whole point, like the whole story in this is that each of the three girls has a specific role to play in the Powerpuff Girls, which is kind of weird in of itself, but we'll talk about that when we talk about the the plot. Um but Bubbles specifically is the one with the ice breath. How how do you <laughs> mess that up? Yeah, like I don't that that has bothered me since the set. I I even remember clearly seeing it the first time. I literally was like, "Why did they do that? That's not right. That's wrong." Like, oh, it's it always bothered me. And like, I get it's something small, and it like obviously doesn't ruin the entire special. But it's like that is no. Blossom's like signature power. It's like. Imagine if you watch the Avengers and suddenly Thor was, you know, carrying a shield with a star on it and, you know, threw it at everyone instead of wielding <laughs> his hammer. It's like, wait, th no, th that's Captain America's thing. Why is Thor doing that now? It's like, you know, it kind of ruins a defining. Well, it doesn't ruin it, but it takes away a defining character and gives it to another, which isn't really known for it, which is, you know, it's off putting. Yeah. And I mean, we're not, it's not like a minor detail of like, Okay, like in the in the 2016 show, Bubbles has little things in her hair, um, and like I'm, you know, whatever. It's a it's a minor design change that seems to just kind of be there for the sake of changing her design. Doesn't really add anything, um, you know. Okay, that's a tweak to the character, and it's it's not even it's not even like if it were like okay in in episode 304, Blossom says that she does not like eating macaroni, and here she's eating macaroni. No, this is Blossom having the ice breath is a thing that's relevant in. At least two episodes. There's there's a whole episode about her ice power. There's the other late late episode where uh, Buttercup doesn't know what what she can do special. Like this is a this is a big recurring element in the show, and they just didn't care. I I honestly don't know what the mindset was behind this decision. I'm I'm really curious, but I don't know if we'll ever find out why. Um, and I mean, Craig McGracken is he attached to this thing? I don't believe he had any involvement. Yeah, but yeah, I I. I mean, the, whoever whoever made this knows well enough that they have ice mm -hmm. powers. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Maybe they were trying to go for color coordination. Who knows? <laughs> or or maybe it is just like maybe this was supposed to be a reboot. I mean, there's nothing in it that like explicitly ties to the series itself. There's nothing that contradicts it. I, I mean, aside from the ice breath. And maybe the professor's past. I'm not entirely sure on that. Yeah, I can explain that when we get to it. <laughs> okay. Um, but there's nothing in it that's like, it, it's not like referencing the Pokey Oaks being destroyed or something, which squarely sets it in a sequel category. Yeah. So should we actually talk about the story or should we just end it here? Um, we can, we can talk about the story briefly. Why not? <laughs> why not? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is something it's, it's an interesting, uh, interesting special because it revolves around the girls getting this hot new multiplayer video game called, you know, Dance Pants Revolution, obviously played on Dance Dance Revolution. And that's another thing that's always kind of been strange to me is now correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not into the competitive DDR scene. But 
wasn't it already on its way out if not kind of gone from mainstream popularity once this show or once the special was made because i always saw ddr as like yeah. a 2000s thing not a 2010s thing it, it was kind of in the wave of like guitar hero yeah. and all of that i mean ddr has has always kind of been its own thing because it has a huge presence in the arcades and I'm not trying to say that it's not still no, something of, that people don't play. Of course it is. I, I have a good friend who, uh, C.R. Martin, he plays it all the time. But <laughs> but yeah, especially like the home console mm-hmm. version, it it's not like a hot... It, I don't know. Like, did someone focus test this and like kids just responded well to DDR? Like, I, I don't know. what What is the inception behind this dance thing? It's not really related. I'm, it, 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 like, when you think Powerpuff Girls, you don't think like dancing. No. You... <laughs> Because it's, that's another thing. And this is actually something I was going to bring up uh, if we were to compare it to the reboot is like, there's action in the very, very, very beginning. And then it kind of just drops that completely and does this dance thing for the rest of like 18 minutes that it runs. And it's like, yes, why is this what you decided to kind of focus the special on? Like if you're bringing the Powerpuff Girls back after a five year hiatus, why is it not focusing on the fighting like that's what it's known for you know well and to be fair to be fair the powerpuff girls have played video Absolutely. games before this is not i mean there's the famous they're literally like playing zelda in one episode um this is not 100 percent out of the realm it's just if you were going to pick some sort of like modern device that the girls are obsessed with you think you'd make it like i mean even it's 2014 we're not cell phones were a big thing at that point it's we're, this is not ancient history here cell phones were a thing uh tablets were a thing you know there's there's lots of things that they could have picked so the the dancing um that seems to be a random thing and the only thing i could think of is just that dancing would make for a, something that's visually interesting to present in this new style but I, I don't i don't have a huge problem with it it does just kind of stand out as a little bit like why yeah, would they do and this? that's that's my whole thing is is like what made this the defining you know centerpiece as opposed to any other idea that could have been on the table that that's kind of where i'm coming from mm-hmm. i mean i don't i don't think right. it's like the worst thing ever and i don't really mind the dancing so much it's just you know i'm just kind of curious as to what made it the what it was i mean at least we know what dance dance revolution is it's not like they picked like planking or something very that... true <laughs> oh no <laughs> you know oh, i today. don't want to see a plank oh <laughs> planking i remember when that was a thing <laughs> but but well it's okay so you remember planking i i can't pick an example that you don't remember and that i don't remember because i well, don't remember it then again but, the more i think you know... about it the more planking would make sense for etta and Nettie. but that's for another discussion <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness um but the story okay so the story itself i i like like the idea of the story like the the frame of it mojo takes control of the girls that's that's very powerpuff girlsy i don't know specifically if they've ever done anything like that i mean there was the episode where uh bubbles thought she was mojo but i don't really know that there was any episode where he mind controlled them or he um, they were really kind of on the same side, intentionally the, or not. The that... closest episode to that that I can think of is the episode where Mojo takes over as narrator and kind of forces the girls to do what he says since he's the narrator and he holds the power of the story. But other than that, I don't believe there were like any outright mind control episodes unless I'm drawing a blank. And if I am, I feel so bad. I feel like I feel like there might have been one with the mayor, but I don't recall with the girls. Anyway... Yeah, it, it you know it's okay, and and the the DDR game is an unusual, weird thing to to do it with. So it's interesting. I like the frame of it. I just the way the story is presented is, it's weirdly paced. Um, like they get the they get the video game. Well, first, okay, so we established that the girls have this routine, which apparently they just solve every single problem they ever have with this three-girl routine, and that each of them have to play the specific part, because if you don't turn whatever it is into a gummy bear, apparently the day is not saved. Um, (laughs) So they have this routine, and then uh, Mojo's like, oh, I'll get you, and then the video game, which they buy, by the way, in the beginning, Bubbles gets addicted to it and doesn't want to go to help, and then... Like, the girls try to get a... They have to get a pickle jar down for the mare that's up on a high shelf, and apparently they can't do this without doing all three of their powers. And it's played like a joke, because the the, the episode acknowledges it. The mare says, you you know, you can't do this without bubbles. Like, this is stupid. (laughs) Even the mare knows that this is stupid. 
Um, but then, like, just immediately it's treated like Bubbles has a video game addiction just because she didn't want to help the mayor one time. It, like, I don't know. Did you feel that? That it's just, like, the addiction and, like, that happened so fast. Not to mention the fact that it's resolved so fast. Because as soon as the girls get yeah. back home, Blossom and Buttercup sit her down. It's like, <laughs> okay, we're having an intervention. You're addicted. She's like, no. They're like, yes. She's like, no. And they do that. And they show, like, that time lapse of, like, the moon going up over the <laughs> yeah. house. And then it's morning. And she's like, okay, I agree. I'm good. And it's like... Like, yeah, it was like, a funny joke, but at the same time, it's like, okay, so the addiction was introduced and resolved within a minute. So it's like a very, yes. very small plot point. And I mean, it does come back. And and it does, does well, does it, does it actually even matter? Because Mojo's controlling them. Why do they need to be addicted to the game in the first place? Yeah, like, honestly, <laughs> they could have just, you know, she didn't have to be addicted. She could have actually just picked it up and say, ooh, the sequel, and just go turn it in anyways. Yeah. So... Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't necessary, uh, but so, um, but okay, so so it, that happens fast, and ultimately, yeah, it, it doesn't necessarily matter. And then Mojo takes control of Bubbles. She, uh, he gets Blossom, and Buttercup, and then at like at a point in the story, the Professor hears dancing and goes to reminisce <laughs> about his years as a dance. <laughs> like this is, but this is this is like the oddity of this special is that these weird these like these things happen just like so unnaturally. Like the professor just hears the word yeah. dancing, <laughs> runs off to his lap. I mean, it is funny. I'm I'm not gonna lie. It is it is somewhat funny. I don't know if it's intentionally funny in that way. But it is funny just how, like, <laughs> abruptly he has this, like, nom flashback to, to, to dancing. <laughs> yeah, like, because, and I have this written in our notes, but um, it, in the, it, this, this point, in a sense, retcons the original in a way. And again, if this is supposed to be, you know, its own separate thing, or if it's the introduction to a reboot or what have you, that's completely understandable. But uh, if we were to say, okay, yes, this is part of the original's continuity, the professor being a dancer and failing ultimately leads him to become a scientist because he meets these other four scientists like Stephen Hawking and, um, oh yeah, wait, yeah, do you remember that? It's yeah. like this really God. random, like 15 no. second moment where he's sitting there with all these other scientists <laughs> and they're like, look at us, we're smart. And he's like, okay, I'll be a scientist now. And that's basically what it is. And I'm like, I'm like, but. <laughs> Hang on, but, but I think you you missed the detail of just that it's from different yeah, time like... periods. The only person there that's from our time period, rest in peace, is uh, yeah. Stephen Hawking. <laughs> All the rest of them are like, you know, it's like uh, Isaac Newton and whoever. Like, I I, I don't know. I, <laughs> it's it's random. <laughs> it, it's random. But yes. you know, it's something. It's not. It's not in your face random. It's only random if you actually sit and think and realize. Wait a second. All these guys are dead. <laughs> like, but, um, yeah, it's, it's just, I mean, personally, I don't think the sprinkler is a terrible dance move, but anyway, he gets knocked <laughs> off this, uh, he gets knocked off this, yeah, hay wagon. wagon and, oh, oh, hey, did you, um, did you, do you know what that's referencing that wagon? It's referencing something? If, if yeah. it is, I don't um, know. Um, not, okay, uh, it's referencing Soul Train. It's called, like. I forget even what they call it in this episode. It's called, like, Soul Wagon. Really? Soul Train is, like, this sh show about dancing. I only know it because it would come on after oh, WD. Okay. So I always... Would get... No, I, I I, mean, if you want dated references, there you go. It, it, you didn't lose anything by not knowing that, but it is, like, a mm -hmm. play on that. That's really interesting. I, I don't That's know. It's really interesting. I never would have known that. Continue. But... Continue <laughs> anyway, your thought. Um, it retcons the professor in, in the sense that him failing as a dancer is what leads him to be a scientist in this, but in the original it's established in the episode Get Back Jojo when Mojo Jojo goes back in the past and kind of tries to kill the professor by throwing him in a volcano. He sees the Powerpuff Girls save him, albeit his vision is blurred, but he sees them and he's inspired at that moment to become a scientist and kind of recreate them. I don't necessarily know nah. if we're looking from a logical standpoint how that works, but you know, it's a cartoon, so I can let that slide. Um, and yeah, it just kind of like glances over that whole backstory and reinvents a new one for him. And again, if this is meant to be a reboot, then that's fine. But if this is meant to be a reboot, that's a really like bad way to introduce like literally the defining characteristic <laughs> of the character that he fell off. He literally fell off a wagon and then met <laughs> different time period 
<laughs> scientists <laughs> who were like, you know, science is cool. Your last name's Utonium, you idiot. Figure it out. I, I, did the professor hit his head at any point? Like, I... <laughs> But he's, a, he, I mean, you know, Dance Dance Revolution's not that right dated of a reference, but oh, trust me, there's dated references in here. They're in there. That if there's one thing that the Powerpuff Girls will never be able to escape from, it's dated references. Oh, <laughs> yes. <boy. laughs> Even the 10th anniversary uh, has some of that. I mean, I, I enjoyed the jokes in it at, uh, at the time, and I enjoy them now because of how quaint they are, but it has, like, dramatic chipmunk yeah. in it. <laughs> um, not to derail us too hard. So, okay, so story-wise... There's that bit, and then there's also this weird rush bit where, you know, okay, so Mojo takes control of the girls, and blah, blah, blah. Professor walks into their room and finds the three notable people and animal um, tied up and just immediately figures out <laughs> that Mojo Jojo is controlling the girls. And, um, and, 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 oh, not only that, but, like, just this weird, like, so, okay, so... Early in the episode, it's established that the professor has just this insane security measure to his lab, which is funny, and it's funny. Um, it's like Dexter's lab e, And apparently the three things that... The three people and animal that Mojo captures are related to that. They can all get around the security measures, and sometimes in ridiculous ways, like Fibonacci's... Apparently his uh, his sequins, but um bump um, can... can uh, redirect the lasers but like he figures this out in just again it, i feel like it's a joke but it, it doesn't it, it's like all the plot points in this thing are jokes yeah and i don't i don't know um i don't know it's funny but it's also i feel like they could have played it up even for better laughs if it had maybe been more obvious that it's a joke yeah and i get what you mean and i mean they do even make another joke out of it when i think it was miss bellum asks him if he freed them and it just cuts back and it's just like he's standing there like worried and looking at them and then he just runs off and leaves them there I'm like you know that was actually pretty funny but uh, yes also um also the best part of uh fibonacci in the episode is when he tells the little mole thing to <laughs> yes. just not untie the opera singer because they're singing it yeah. was annoying like that and then was they a high five yeah. and, and it and he, well, but, but his line is let it be because of course it is um you know, so, so yeah, I mean, we, we are talking about the story, and I do think, um, oh, and I mean, the, how it ends, um, that's, uh, it's, it's, you... it's something else. So basically what happens is, after this whole, after the professor goes into the city and finds the girls are being mind controlled by Mojo, uh, they, he essentially joins with the mayor and Miss Bellum, and they have a three on three <laughs> dance off with each other, where Mojo's like controlling them and they're doing all these like weird moves and stuff. And I'm like, okay, I mean, this isn't how I imagine what the final conflict in Powerpuff Girls would go, but let's see how this does. And they kind of do this dance off thing. And then ultimately the professor and mayor Miss Bellum fail. And you know, it, 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 it pulls in a sense of deus ex machina where it's like first like girls remember me and then it like zooms into them and it shows these memories of them getting along and there's one that really i'm i'm not sure what the deal is but it shows a window with some rainbows outside oh is oh. that a wait did, did you get that is one is that a reference again that's what i'm asking oh oh Oh, yes, it okay. is, my friend, because dated references doesn't get more dated than double rainbow all the way across the sky. Wait, that was a double rainbow reference? Are you si Oh, my gosh, it was. Wow. I did not even realize that. Yes. So, I mean, we'll, we're we'll get to it. We'll get to talking about how this kind of compares to the reboot, but uh if memes are there wow, i did not even I didn't memes even are notice. there i was more i was more taken aback by the fact that he's like he's looking out the window and the girls close it and he starts like he's all like happy about it i'm like is he like anti-meme or something like like that's what i'm thinking give, now give, give the special some credit in that i would think it was too mem mesmerized by it give the special some credit for not explaining that joke at least because like you know another show <clears throat> Uh, would have been, like, had all the girls, like, look outside and be like, a double rainbow across the sky! Oh my gosh! You know, I hate to say this, but that would be and, the perfect yeah. plot line for Painbow 2. <laughs> no, no Painbow 2. <laughs> oh, I, Painbow 2, I more shouldn't pain. have said that out loud. Oh, dear. 
No, but anyways. No. Um. Ne- next, you're gonna you're gonna want some sort of sequel to the, to the oh, unicorn no, please. episode. Oh well, we already oh <laughs> we already got that with the last Donnie Corn. That was I, of course the, of course that they was it painful. That. I'm I, that review is 50 minutes long. <laughs> My review on it is that was a good minutes. that was a good like exasperated. Yeah, I was there. like, whew. Um, anyway, <laughs> getting getting the hot sweats. <laughs> um. It's sorry. It's like it's like ninety degrees where I live right now. Um, so okay. So the, but but the most ridiculous. Okay, so as if they wanted to top just how insane it is that like the the climax of this special is the professor and uh, and and the two others dancing against the robot power buff girls controlled by Mojo. Um, the ending. It turns out, and I had completely forgotten this. That Mojo only wanted these characters because they'd be good on a baseball team. Yeah. There there was no plan to break into the lab at all. That was all made up by the professor. <laughs> it's just... Honestly, I, I hate to say this, but I feel like the way we're describing all of this makes it sound funny. Yeah, it's, like... it's, it's not as funny as you're making it out to be. It's kind of just, like, weird. It's like... Where did this come from? It's like the most random last minute shift in tone. Yeah, and then they actually have the baseball game. Uh, yeah, uh, and that that's uh, the other yeah. thing. Not only that. So he explains <laughs> that he wants to have a baseball game, right? And he's like, "Where yeah. the professor's yes. like, "Where are you going to get the other four members?" And so he and the girls join. And then they have the game, and then they arrest him. Like they don't arrest him on the spot. They have the game, and then they arrest him. Yeah, I, I mean, and it doesn't, it, of course it doesn't make any sense. No. Like, some comedy <laughs> endings are, are want to do. Mojo was going to ask them to be on the team. I mean, I guess maybe it's implied that he was going to use the mind-controlled Powerpuff Girls to be on the team, but how is, how is he going to recruit Utonium? And, wh- like, all, <laughs> after all of this dancing, you would think that the, the, the Mojo's, like, twist would be that he wanted them for a dance competition or something, or, like, he was filming the whole thing and it went viral. Like, I don't know, knowing the new show, that's probably what they do. <laughs> but, um... But, uh... <laughs> the way the way you, you laugh makes me think there might be an episode about that. But, um, kind of, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, baseball is just, what? <laughs> okay. I, I, um, I, yeah. Um, so the story is not a highlight. Um, you know, it's just, look, the, the good things about this, I think the art style is interesting. I think some jokes do work. And I think that like in a way, just how ludicrous and insane the story beats are, um, do make it interesting to watch but i also feel like a lot of um a lot of the pacing a lot of how abrupt things are and and like how long they'll spend on certain things like bubbles being addicted uh to the game they'll they'll spend all that time showing how addicted she is for it to not matter and then just like give the professor a like 30 second flashback that has to convey that he loved dancing he danced in the city of townsville he got kicked off of this hayride and then met these scientists and that's why he got into si- like they'll they'll glance over that but then we'll get just like long sequences we'll get bubbles crumping no no the the security guard crumping against the (laughs) bubbles fight like (laughs) yeah when they're at the zoo okay oh man but yeah yeah, that's kind of my summation it's just that like it's interesting boy It, it really is interesting um but a lot of the stuff they're attempting to do does kind of fall flat or is is not funny because they like the joke is good it's just funny because of just how just weird it is yeah and i think that's why i like it in that sense it's it's so absurd like the sheer absurdity of some of the things that happen it's like you know this doesn't make any sense but it's not like obnoxious or annoying or in your face about it it just kind of does its thing and it's like oh hey let's talk about the fact that you know the professor is a obsessed with dancing and then he gets his entire life ruined in the matter of one insult and it's like like that that's just the most dramatic turnaround that i've like ever seen (laughs) in terms of character progression i I would disagree that it's not in your face because it is very in your face they literally they literally say that this guy got served (laughs) well true there is that part where bubbles flies towards the screen and punches the guy 
Uh, oh, that reminds me of another thing. When when Buttercup gets the call and she's in her room working on a car engine, I'm like, this, what is she like? Why is she working on a car engine? And more importantly, how did she get that car in her room? I mean, I get she's a Powerpuff Girl, but like, still, it's just so weird. I, I mean, the same way they got a whale in their house at one time. <laughs> oh, I love that episode. <laughs> <laughs> it thing, is but I, I love it that's see that's the thing the powerpuff girls in a sense has always always across everything the powerpuff girls has ever done been stupid in a way in a way on paper it's it's always kind of been about being absurd it's just all about the execution of is it funny it does the absurdity cross the line into just like this is just completely stupid or does it stay within that nice little balance of absurd but funny absurd and not just like why am I watching this absurd? And I think that that's where a lot of the, um, a lot of the bad episodes from the first show and from the second show and even this kind of, um, they kind of have like that same sort of thing where if you were to read the description of the episode, they all kind of sound dumb. Like Bubbles takes a whale into their house and tries to hide it from the professor. That sounds so stupid, but with good comedy, with good writing, with keeping it like just believable in the right places, um, you can do a great thing. You can make it fantastic. Absolutely. And this is something that the reboot, like, I'll give Dan Spence credit. It, it, it is in your face uh, at points, but there are a lot of subtle things. Like, again, the car engine that I just mentioned, again, I wouldn't have noticed the double rainbow thing that you pointed out or the the Soul Train reference or anything like that. And it's like, that's where I love this special the most is with, like, the less noticeable things or like, and the same, the same goes with the reboot. It's when it's not trying too hard to like acknowledge its jokes when it just does its thing and doesn't really need to point it out to you. And same with the original. That's what I always love is when it's like, it lets the viewer kind of make the connection. Like, wait a second. Yep. I, I like the, um, you know, on the, on the dance pants too, it's, it's like, or on the, in the dance game, it's dance, dance, red, red evolution. evolution. And B Bubbles says it and pronounces it that way, but it's not like, I don't know, it's just kind of a minor joke, and I thought that was clever. And then, like, when Professor reads the back and it's, like, a fun game for Mojos to enjoy or something like that, and it's like, okay, that's funny because that's kind of how, like, boxes are written, um, you know, in board games and stuff like that. So, I, I agree. When, when it's not trying as hard, when this special isn't trying as hard, and when the reboot isn't trying as hard, it can be okay and it can be good, even. Uh, so speaking of the reboot, um, I I thought that it'd be pretty interesting, and I, I think you agreed with me that we wouldn't just look at Dance Pants, but we'd look at Dance Pants in relation to the reboot because in a way this is the this is some sort of pilot for it. It's not in any way a straightforward pilot, but it seems like Cartoon Network made this with the idea of doing at least something else with the franchise, um, and somewhat gauging like what interest there was and stuff and i mean i think that there are definitely some common threads between this special and the reboot yeah absolutely and i mean one of those big factors that we've kind of already said is like the sheer randomness to it because there's a lot of lol so random humor in the reboot when it comes to just no, no. Oh, well i'm sorry no <laughs> but um like just when it comes to general like jokes and gags and unfortunately at the reboots like kind of demise it's too random and too in your face about it like for example the most the most immediate um instance i can think of is in the episode sister sitter uh right at the beginning it's an episode where blossom and bubbles get uh get sick and i forget what they call it but they essentially get swine flu but it's taken literally so like they have these you know kind of like pig-like symptoms and they turn into giant warthogs but anyway the symptoms of like the illness are that, you know, they get these red spots and they're really sleepy and they have, they hallucinate that they're climbing Mount Everest and Bubbles like climbs up on the professor's shoulder and she kind of says it's like, you know, the altitudes, I forget what the line is because it's been so long since I saw that episode, but, you know, and it's like, it's kind of pushing it too far in that context because it's like, it doesn't really incite laughter and it doesn't really incite any type of you know excitement or anything like that it's just kind of like what is it going for here and that's what a lot of not all of the jokes but a lot of the jokes 
for me tend to come down to because it's either me not necessarily laughing and I can see when the show is trying as you know as the same with dance pants here I can see when it's trying to go for a joke it just doesn't always land I mean I would say that yeah in that's definitely one of those things where they both do kind of have that sort of hit or miss joke type of thing that misses unfortunately a little bit too much um and, and, I mean, Dance Pants also does have that thing where it does feel like in places it's trying too hard to, to sell the joke. Um, but yeah, I mean, the big thing, one of the big things is just that Dance Pants does have a lot of those references in them. And I, I do also think that it is fair to call out the 10th, 10th anniversary reboot for having it. And I mean, it's fair to call out the original show in a, to an extent. I mean, I would argue that they did it decently well, but... I mean, there's an episode called The Very Special Blossom. <laughs> like, there's references abound all across this franchise, and it's just how important how important is it that you understand the reference? How, like, how bland are they with it? I mean, the, the like, easy example with the reboot is the, the Hangover episode. It's the Hangover episode. Everyone knows it's the Hangover episode. Um, it, it doesn't really... I don't know, like, having, if you've watched The Hangover, I don't think you really get any extra jokes out of it, and if you don't know what The Hangover is, if you're too young or whatever, obviously The Hangover is not really, like, a kid's movie, um, I can definitely see why you kind of scratch your head at some of the decisions made in the episode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Funny thing is, when I made my initial review, I, I hadn't seen that movie, so I was, like, left, com I was trying to piece everything together, and I none of the references really made it, so I was like, well, this is really kind of... I don't know if I get this. And that's the other thing that's weird about that episode is, is like as a kid, like they're obviously not going to know the movie. I mean, they're going to have heard of it maybe. maybe and seen the trailer. But like, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe. Like, do you really do you really want to predicate your whole episode of like a kind of like especially childish reboot on kids having seen the hangover? Like, I. but but this episode has it. I mean, it. The whole episode isn't a, a reference to anything. I mean, aside from Dance Dance Revolution, it's not like this is the plot of a movie. As far as I know, I mean, maybe. But um, it does kind of seem to at least have that going for it. But in terms of in terms of having, like, memes and little references, and considering, like, it has, like, the, the double rainbow and stuff, there might be more references in here that we just don't get just because they're so dated. Um, that, like, that's that's a common thread across the reboot. You can definitely... In a way, they were definitely trying to modernize the Powerpuff Girls in the in the special, but it's not. Um, it isn't as obvious as the reboot. They don't give the girls cell phones. They don't do too much in terms of that, but they do kind of have some things that are quote unquote modern, I guess, or trying. Yeah. Because I mean, like when when I look at the reboot, you know, it's it's easy to jump to things like you know. The Nomagusta face from TR Trouble. That's the one a lot of people like to point out. There's a lot of lingo and slang thrown around that like you know the original if i can give it credit it's like a lot of the time when the original would reference slang like the episode power prof always comes to mind the professor's like saying groovy totally tubular and the girls are making <laughs> fun of him for it and they're like oh mm -hmm. that's so lame why would you say that and it's like that's one thing i like about the original is it makes fun of it whereas the reboot kind of takes it seriously and does it literally like buttercup's always like yeah uh, calling her sisters by like these shorter names and you know bubbles yeah what's, know, up, what's up bubs <laughs> i don't know i, I, I don't um know. <laughs> oh uh I, oh yeah um but i mean to to the original show's credit a lot of most of the time when they did reference things it was a little bit more contemporary and a little or um not contemporary it was a little bit more um you know, referencing very popular things, like the the Cartman reference in the one episode. I mean, that's South Park still airs today. It's still got new episodes coming out. They picked a uh, a cultural touchstone that is still relevant to this day. Where whereas picking like the double rainbow thing, I mean, I know it now, but you give it a few more years, and I don't know that I would recognize that. I mean, I only recognized it because it. I, I was thinking like, what is up with this? Ra what is up with this window? Why is the prof oh okay double rainbow? Um, and even then, the f why is he like laying on the ground? Is he just overwhelmed with it? Was that a part of the meme? I don't. I don't. Is he planking? Maybe oh he's no! Planking. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> I don't know. But you know. But you know something. There is crumping, which is. I mean, I don't know how long crumping has been around, but that that just kind of seems like like if that was if this dance pants was done today, that would have been yeah, dabbing. Definitely. I just feel like Absolutely. that would have been dabbing. Um. See, and that's another thing. 
is with the original, like I, I'm, there are a few like dated references by this point, but like most of the references are, or were slash are timeless. Like, you know, they reference star Wars, they reference yeah. the Beatles, you know, the justice, justice league. league. Exactly. The, a lot of the things they do are like, immortalized in pop culture like even even though the beatles haven't been together for how many we are like we're gonna know the beatles for basically the rest of time or you know they're never going to completely fade away into obscurity and that's what the powerpuff girls tended to focus on was the bigger references now obviously as we mentioned um the powerpuff girls rule reference the uh epic prairie dog or (laughs) chipmunk yeah and uh or yeah whatever yeah and uh like uh, there, there's also a, a shell yeah, from Mario Kart, which, which is not dated. Again, but, Mario I mean, Kart, that's that's going to be around for a while. So, like, I can let that slide. But, like, there are some. It does make you it does make you wonder, though, that, like, I mean, it's maybe, is it just because memes weren't a thing back then? Like, do you think that if memes had existed or if Craig McCracken was, like, uh, born later and he's just made the Powerpuff Girls now, would there have been memes? Like, I don't know. There just seems to be this, like, recurring... That is an excellent question because, again, the Powerpuff Girls has a lot of pop pop culture influence, and it reflects that. So Absolutely. the fact that memes have, in a way, become pop culture, I mean, I wouldn't put it past it uh, as much as I'd hate to say yeah. that. I mean, like... <sighs> That's the issue with memes, though, is, like, there's only so few that stand the test of time. Like, you know, over 9,000, that's I mean, still I, a thing. I know it's not as popular as it once was, but everyone still knows that one versus, you know, like, I don't know, shoop the whoop, I'm a fire in my laser. No one really makes those jokes anymore. And I, I the example I always go to is, like, the troll yeah. face. I mean, people don't really use it in terms of memes anymore, but if you show a troll face, people know what you, people know it. People know it by heart. You, you know, you don't have to explain it or anything. Um, but, uh, a point that you made in relation to the, the new show and, and dance pants is just that, like the hip hop and dancing, like that is, that is, I mean, there's rapping in the new show, right? Yeah. And a lot of episodes actually, oh dear. (laughs) Once upon a Townsville viral spiral, Puff Dora's box, escape from monster Island. I'm pretty sure there's one more season one episode I'm forgetting. And that's not even season two, which I I haven't seen all the season two episodes, does, so who knows? Does the professor dance in the reboot? Yes, in the episode Green Wing, he does. <laughs> I've never seen that's, that. Or, and I don't think I've seen your review. That's the most recent one. one. I just put it out like oh. three or four weeks ago. So, <laughs> yeah, he dances in that one. And it, yeah, <laughs> shameless plug. Oh, how about... <laughs> Does he, does he do the sprinkler? He doesn't do the sprinkler, but he does some weird like <laughs> pelvic thrusting move. So... <laughs> <laughs> And and they oh, do do no. a joke where basically in the episode without like spoiling too much I guess but basic oh ooh, ooh. <laughs> basically in the episode I, excuse me uh <laughs> sorry I didn't know you I didn't know if you wanted the Powerpuff Girls reboot spoiled for you at all <laughs> listen listen I want to know I don't want to know if the professor and and Arachna girl <laughs> end up together I I need to keep... <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> I want to. I don't. I don't need to know if like Donnie gets gets that like horn transplant surgery he's been needing or something. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, without spoiling, basically a bunch of people get possessed into dancing, and after that, after they are oh. unpossessed, the professor keeps going as if he's into it, and they play it off as a joke. And uh, he's doing that pelvic mm. thrusting move at the end once it's finished. And I was like, oh, okay, this is a sight to behold. Uh. Okay, so do you think that those these elements that leaked into the reboot may have had anything to do with Dance Pants? Or is it just it's just a coincidence? That's an interesting question because ultimately I think it's up to speculation because there are definitely a lot of similarities in the style of humor that both kind of share. Um the writing in Dance Pants doesn't it doesn't completely line up with the way the reboot is written. Because, you know, even though it's got those references, it's still very a very contemporary story in the way they are written, in the way that the characters kind of speak and talk versus the reboot. It's definitely, you know, slang everywhere, using all these, you know, hand wavy terms. And there's a lot more cultural integration that you don't completely see in dance pants again it's kind of there with ddr but i mean 
at the same time, y- you could say that because I know that people who worked on the reboot have went out and said that they referred to the original show. And by extension, that could also apply to Dance Pants. And I could totally see Dance Pants kind of laying the groundwork as a beta test of sorts that in some ways could lead to the reboot because there are a lot of comparisons that we've made. It's it's actually funny because one of the episodes that I watched for the sake of uh, for the other discussion that's <laughs> on my channel <laughs> right now um, uh, involves the two clone blossoms doing focus testing. <laughs> so I, I I don't know. Um, no, I, I, I if I had to guess, I mean, it does. It is very different. I'm not. I, I mean, there are definitely similarities and through lines, but I guess maybe it's entirely possible that the people who worked on Dance Pants or the the basically like the idea of doing dance pants, whatever Cartoon Network executive had it, because I'm sure it wasn't like someone like, it wasn't like a fan that like pitched this idea or something. It it was someone in the network wanted to do this for whatever reason. Maybe the same reason that they want to do that is the same reason why the Powerpuff Girls reboot exists. So even if they didn't necessarily take inspiration from this or like, it wasn't the same through line of like, um, you know, directly leading from one to the other, it might've been both decisions to make the show, I, I don't know, quote unquote, crunk? No, woke? What? what I, I, I don't know. What, whatever you'd call this. Uh, what? I don't know. I don't know how to describe hey, it. Hey, Lamau, my dude. Lit AF, fam. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. It's. I mean, yeah. It, it might have been. It might have been the same through line. Is basically yeah. what I'm saying. It might have been the same. Um. It might have been two different, completely different thoughts that both kind of led to the same conclusion of let's do this with the show well yeah and like let me like as i said earlier this you know and even then i i know some people say adventure time's more successful personally i still think this is the most successful show but i'm biased um the powerpuff girls is essentially cartoon network's most successful property of all time so like the fact that they bring it back out of any property is like you know i could totally understand that excuse me i don't i don't think you're quite remembering my friend uh, the most successful Cartoon Network show is a little ditty known as Teen Titans Go, your new favorite show. Cartoon Network original. I'll, I'll put that asterisk there then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but, but yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, do, do you think, I mean, is there any, is there anything that you liked about this and that you also like about the reboot? Or is there anything that you think that maybe Dance Pants positively uh, lent to the, to the reboot? I, I can't think of anything. Aside from, I guess, re-sparking interest in the Powerpuff mm. Girls. Okay. Because, like, had Dance Pants been made, and you know, some people would actually see this as a good thing. Had Dance Pants never been made, the reboot might not exist. But at the same... At, oh, no. uh, Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, <laughs> had since Dance Pants was made, a lot of people got their interest re-sparked in the Powerpuff Girls after it being gone so long. I know it did it for me. I went back and watched the entire original show after Dance Pants aired. And, you know, the reboot. I I even remember when the reboot was first premiering, a lot of people, because the reboot was not appealing to them, they all went back to the original show. And, you know, that applies to a lot of reboots. Is like, even if the reboot itself isn't good, it still reminds people of what came before and probably, in some cases, influences them to go back to it. So, in that sense, you can see that as a positive, but... That's not that's not necessarily a positive on the show, but rather a positive on fans of the Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, no, I don't think. I mean, the sh- the reboot doesn't really have like special guest stars, so I can't say that no. that um was influenced. It doesn't. It's not anything close to the same art style. Not even like you could say that the reboot is like a um a two D version of it because no. it's not at all. Um, you can't say. Like, even the characterization, I mean, the professor is weird in this, but I wouldn't say he's no. stupid like he is in no. the reboot. Um, yeah, his dancing is definitely, like, unusual, <laughs> but not. It's, it is it is kind of in line with this characterization in the original show, where in the original show, he was he was stern and down to earth. But, like, he had his moments where he would go on these yeah. weird, obsessive <coughs> he, tangents. He can be goofy at times. So, yeah, so it kind of fits with that. Miss Bellum is there. Uh, the, the mayor is... <laughs> I don't know. The mayor doesn't do a single stupid thing. And in, in fact, I mean, aside, I guess aside from insulting Miss Bellum, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess, I guess. Oh, okay. I guess maybe that's something it has in common. Totally coincidentally, probably, um, or maybe not. Maybe this is a part of the reason why. 
I mean, this special did not have a huge focus on the mayor or Miss Bellum. Miss Bellum hardly speaks in it. True. She doesn't even she doesn't even really show up till the third act. Yeah, I mean, her whole thing is that she's having a spat with the mayor because exactly. the mayor is mad that she won't, he won't open the mm-hmm. pickle jar. Or, or no, uh, she's mad because he cares more about the pickle the jar city. than the city. And like, that's established in the first 30 seconds. And then, yeah, it, it's kind of like this ongoing B plot, but it's only really... Very, very yeah, background. Yeah, it, it's, it's brought up once in the first act, once in the second act, and once in the third act. And it's kind of like, you know, briefly touched on. So so I don't know. I guess there's that. I mean, not that I'm saying that is a good thing. I mean, I don't know. Maybe less Mary is a good thing in mm-hmm. a way. Um, he's, a, he's a hit or miss character, I'd say, even in the original show. He had his great moments. And then there were episodes where it's like, just what is the purpose of this character? <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, okay. So it didn't. I mean, I guess, yeah, influence, I guess we could say it probably, this probably didn't influence the new show in any way, except maybe some of the same thinking mm-hmm. was used for creating both. Um, yeah. Yeah, that'd be fair. And I don't know, it, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't really um, speak too well to it that if anything came from this, it, it was the, the origin of the, the hip hop and Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> <laughs> because we all love that, right? <laughs> yes uh, oh so much <clears throat> so one last question i think is the something really interesting if you could rewrite history or solve a mystery um <laughs> would, i see what you did there would you yep yep this is, would you have made a show based upon this if you could say all right you know what i want this is this is a straight up pilot and we are going to get a power of girl show with the same art style maybe refined a little bit because you know pilots are different whatever um, would you have rather this than the Powerpuff Girls reboot, or would you have even just liked to have seen this? Um, so I'm of the opinion that I I wouldn't necessarily want to see a full series, but I'd totally dig a mini series because <clears throat> in a lot of ways, this is only one episode, so it's not enti- it wouldn't necessarily be reflective of the entire thing, but in terms of the art style, I, I always remember Dance Pants out of everything it's for its art style and it's because it's so unique and it's so different and i feel like if there were too much of it it would kind of lose its significance in a way true i i don't think i mean i don't think they could produce it in the same exact way No, i feel like i feel like this had a higher budget to make than a regular episode i mean it would have had to so personally i would be down with a mini if if it were to have like this exact same style i'd be fine with like a mini series of like five or ten episodes if they did refine it maybe simplify it down a bit i could see it working as a full series but that i would like at least another take on the character designs of the girls because i i think that they should be a little more saturated in their colors and like yeah as you mentioned the eyebrows are a little distracting they look like they're wind waker link they really do. <laughs> <laughs> but Wind Waker Link looks a lot like more streamlined mm-hmm. and better. I mean, it's tough to say, of course, because we only have one episode of this. And if we were to take like some, one of the better episodes of the reboot and just kind of like compare it, the reboot does look better. But if you were to kind of compare maybe like the first half of the first season of the reboot to this, I I think I would have preferred this if only because this had a vision. This had a weird, weird vision. And I'm not saying this would have been a great show, but I think just the insanity of this could have made for, at the very least, something that leaves more of an impact on this world than the Powerpuff Girls reboot will. Um, You know, like, I I don't know. I mean, maybe that's wishful thinking. We we only can really speculate. This could have been just 12 more episodes of the exact same thing where it's just super uh, weirdly paced, weird randomness that doesn't work, and just weirdness, weird art decisions, etc., um, it could have just completely been way worse than we have it now, but and uh, the fact that they got the um, the ice breath wrong tells us that they might have some grasp on the characters, but they clearly do not have like what you'd want them to have. On yeah, them. I feel like if it were to continue into its own series, it totally would kind of make its own continuity separate from the original completely. Like, and that's and, not necessarily yeah, a bad and thing. I, yeah, and in a in a way. Um, in a way, I mean, it's entirely possible if this has gone on, we would have gotten something very similar to the Powerpuff Girls reboot anyway. Like, you know, I I don't think that they're necessarily too separate from each other. And judging one one special against an entire series is like a weird, unfair comparison. 
um against from what a lot i've seen or, yeah, against a lot of what i've seen in the power of girls reboot especially in the first season i would say that yeah I, I just have preferred this but comparing it to some of the more recent episodes which do seem to be a little bit better um maybe not <laughs> yeah and i'd agree there i guess i guess to go to the to go to the character comparison even though the ice breath thing exists I will say I do feel like the characters were more faithful in this than the reboots were. Yeah. I mean, there is that team dynamic where it they they feel like each character is kind of de- delegated to their own role. So it's like versus the reboot where they don't really have the whole team dynamic going on at all. It's just that there are three sisters that go to school together they don't really have the teamwork like because there's not that many like action moments to show (laughs) this off you know it's like they get it it lasts for like maybe 30 seconds per episode and some episodes don't have it at all where so what you're what's that (laughs) what you're saying is we should uh we should just rename the powerpuff girls reboot to just the girls girls. yeah basically i mean (laughs) the kindergarten i'm pretty sure there is more time in the first season spent in school than fighting bad guys. I mean, don't don't do quote me on that, but I'm kind of tempted to go back in time everything now just to see. Here's my hot take. There's more action in this one special than in the entire reap. No, that's obviously not true. <laughs> that's that's obviously not true. But you know, it, it's you know. The fact that that's uh, like the fact that maybe I fooled some people with that hot take uh <laughs> kind of says something. Do you have anything else to say about this? I mean, no, for the most part, that pretty much covers most of my thoughts on Dance Pants overall. So, I mean, thank you very much for having me on. This was a really fun discussion. Absolutely. I enjoyed it. And thank you so much for uh, approaching me to do this because I had a blast. Of course, of course. Yeah. Um, so is there, a, if I was going like, to say, is there anything you want to plug before we uh, end this? I have a YouTube channel and uh, a sore throat. Um, no, uh. <laughs> So if you like this this discussion, we did another one over on my channel where instead of looking at the in Dance Pants, we kind of look at some of the worst episodes of the original Powerpuff Girls series and kind of some of the faults there and see how they line up with the faults in the reboot. We kind of examine some episodes. So uh, if you like this, please check that out. And that's all. Thank, thanks so much, everyone. <laughs> thank you for joining me. And uh, thank you all for watching. Until next time, Shadow Streak signing off.